Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Disney. Disney accused of misleading investors and illegal hiring practices. And this looks like it's going to lead to a major lawsuit, and I will explain why. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. This is about some major action coming out of America First Legal. That's run by this guy, Stephen Miller. And Stephen Miller's group, America First Legal, has sent a very serious letter to Disney and their board of directors. And it's not just a letter like, hey, I'm going to send you a nasty letter, so you better care about my letter. This letter is the kind of letter that's a precursor to a major lawsuit. Before this letter, America First Legal made a federal civil rights complaint against Walt Disney for similar issues, illegal race and sex discrimination. The last time America First Legal did something like this, they did it against Target, where they ultimately filed a lawsuit challenging Target and the board of directors for the damage to the stock price over their ridiculous and obsessive promotion of Pride Month, resulting in shareholders losing a ton of money. It's well known that Disney has cost their shareholders more than $100 billion, $100 billion by not focusing on their business and producing what their customers actually want from them. And one of the things you always see with America First Legal is they get a lot of coverage. They get coverage in Bloomberg. They get coverage in Yahoo. They get coverage in Fox. They get coverage in the New York Post. This is from the New York Post. Disney has harmed investors with woke agenda, pushing anti-police and anti-white content. And from Fox, Disney accused of misleading shareholders with woke political agenda. And from their own website, America First Legal sends letter to the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company alleging unlawful discrimination and misleading of shareholders. Today, America First Legal sent a letter to the Walt Disney Company notifying the company's CEO, Bob Iger, the board of directors, and the management team of their alleged fiduciary duty breaches and federal securities law violations that have led to an approximately 40% drop in Disney's share value since February 2021. Now, stocks do go up and stocks do go down, but 40% is a big drop. Disney has not recovered that loss, and it's clear there's something deeply wrong at Disney. This letter arises from the company's civil rights violations in employment and contracting and the damage to Disney's brand, properties, and commercial reputation by management's manufactured misalignment between its woke political and social agenda and the vast majority of the company's customers. Disney is well aware of who their customers are, they're completely aware they're damaging their brands. They know their brand value is being reduced. They're doing it for ideological reasons, but they're not allowed to do that. They don't own the company. They just manage the company. They really just work there. In February, AFL revealed Disney's perverse system of discriminatory race and sex quotas in front of and behind the camera by filing a federal civil rights complaint with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. All Disney General Entertainment productions are required to comply with Disney's DEI inclusion standards. Some of these standards explicitly provide that 50% of the following jobs must be filled by underrepresented groups, regular and recurring actors and characters in Disney content, producers and writing staff, overall crew or project staff, line producers and or production department heads, including, for example, the director of photography, composer, costume designer, editor, production designer, and music supervisor. Disney, along with Sundance Institute, runs a grant program that provides $25,000 to underrepresented directors, which it defines as women, AAPI, Black, Indigenous, Native, Latinx, LGBT, disability identifying, and religiously marginalized individuals. Basically, anybody but white people. Unfortunately, it sounds crazy to say that, but that's what it is. AFL's letter alleges that Disney's patently illegal program of racial, sexual, and national origin quotas and preferences is the result of the board's failure to put in place effective internal controls to stop civil rights violations. That is a great line of attack for them. The board of directors should have a policy like that. There's really no excuse for them to not have a policy like that except that they intend to discriminate, and that's why they don't have a legal policy. That's important because Disney cannot win on that, and that's a great item for a future lawsuit. AFL also alleges that Disney's management has intentionally manufactured misalignment between the company and its core customers. Disney has told the Securities and Exchange Commission that its business depends on our ability to successfully predict and adapt to changing consumer tastes. 
and that its revenues and profitability are adversely impacted when our entertainment offerings and products, as well as our methods to make our offerings and products available to consumers, do not achieve sufficient consumer acceptance. It's another great line of attack. That explains that if you're producing content that you think is ideologically appropriate, but is not really what your customers actually want, then you're deliberately misaligning, creating a disconnect between the company and its own customers. Another great line of attack in a future lawsuit. Disney also admits that it faces risks related to misalignment with public and consumer tastes and preferences for entertainment, travel, and consumer products, which impact demand for our entertainment offerings and products and the profitability of any of our businesses. Yet management has hijacked the iconic company's parks and creative content to push an extreme and divisive political and socio-sexual agenda that is contrary to the values and preferences of the vast number of American families. As a result, shareholders have suffered a bloodbath. In February 2021, the company's market capitalization was approximately $341 billion. Market capitalization is if you took the value of all the stock on the stock exchange, that would be $341 billion. If you want to buy a company, you usually have to pay even more than the company's market capitalization. 5% more, 10 or 20% more, sometimes even more than that. So the loss is really even greater than America First Legal is calling out here. Today, the market value is approximately $207 billion, a nearly 40% drop. In an apparent violation of federal securities laws, Disney's management has never adequately disclosed to shareholders the financial risk created by its decision to use the company as a weapon for woke culture warriors to destroy pro-American culture. Disney has displayed an inexplicable disregard for its customers and shareholders, forcing radical, gender-expansive, anti-white, and anti-police content on families while providing warnings about harmful content on uncontroversial content. For example, Disney Plus allows users to set up junior mode profiles for young children. Disney only allows these profiles access programming that is supposedly appropriate for all ages. Among this appropriate content is a program that amplifies racial divisiveness and societal unrest. In this show for young children, Children can be seen making protest signs featuring the Black Power Fist. The program tells children that racism in the world affects me and you, and that their skin color is what defines them. A black character warns a younger black character that police might try to stop him on the street because he's black. He also tells the young character that a white man boarding up his business has nothing to fear because no one is trying to hurt them. In reality, Black Lives Matter riots of 2020 caused more than a billion dollars in damage and resulted in more than 20 deaths. So a business owner who happens to be white, who is boarding up his business to protect his livelihood, everything he has, boarding up that business because there's going to be a Black Lives Matter protest is supposedly racist. That's what Disney is pushing out to children. As if there really wasn't a billion dollars worth of damages. We've all seen those protests. They were incredibly violent. Many people died and lots of businesses got looted. Young children can view this program and an episode of Muppet Babies where Gonzo cross-dresses as a female princess in this take on the classic Cinderella story. Ironically, junior mode profiles can view this episode but cannot view classic, uncontroversial Disney films like the original Cinderella. So children are deliberately exposed to Disney's agenda pushing Gonzo as a princess. But you can't see the original Cinderella. They don't want your children seeing that. Something is wrong with that. But nothing is wrong with Gonzo dressing up in a dress to be Cinderella. That's what Disney is pushing. How is this good for business? It's not good for business. Recent Marvel releases have put woke ideology front and center as well. In the opening minutes of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Ant-Man's daughter describes police firing tear gas at peaceful protesters. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness also has a character wearing an LGBT pride pin front and center for most of the film. Disney Plus even features radical content produced under its scientific National Geographic banner. Gender Revolution, a journey with Katie Couric, promotes multiple radical gender dogmas. That, quote, your external genitalia does not dictate your gender. That children can diagnose themselves as transgender. And that puberty blockers are reversible and should be given to all trans minors entering puberty. America First Legal's investigation into gender clinics uncovered consent forms requiring minors to acknowledge that some gender-affirming treatments are not FDA-approved 
and can lead to multiple dangerous and unstudied side effects. Another program on Disney Plus called Pride from Above features a nearly topless transgender individual riding a bike past a young child. Other visuals from the program show men wearing shirts that are essentially a series of straps and only wearing underwear. The website for this parade describes that one can expect to see people of all ages and some nudity. There's no warning on this show with graphic content. However, Disney classic movies like Peter Pan, Dumbo, and the Aristocats have mandatory unskippable 12-second warnings about the harmful impact of certain portrayals of people and cultures that were wrong then and are wrong now. I've been covering America First Legal and what Stephen Miller's group has been doing for more than the last year, and I can tell you it looks like they're gearing up for a pretty major lawsuit against Disney representing shareholders who have lost billions of dollars. There is a vote coming up soon to add Nelson Peltz, an activist investor, to the board of directors of Disney. And while he wouldn't get control of Disney, he wouldn't get control of the board of directors either. He has been asking some very important questions in the last few days, questioning Disney on why are you doing the things that you're doing? Bob Iger, the rest of the Disney board, the management, don't have a good answer to that question or any questions anywhere near addressing the strategy of what they're doing with the intellectual properties. It's clear that they're taking the intellectual properties, capturing them, and using them to try to push an agenda on the American culture, but also the world culture, because Disney's content goes way beyond just the United States. I'm looking forward to more aggressive action from America First Legal, and I'm sure they're planning it out now, and it's really only just a matter of time. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.